Tonight, some are reminded of 2013 when the IRS official Lois Lerner revealed that the agency was targeting conservative groups seeking tax-exempt status. As House Democrats ramp up their demands to see President Trump's tax returns, Republicans say this, quote, weaponization of the IRS is happening again. Earlier, I spoke with one of those Republicans, Senator Chuck Grassley, chairman of the House Finance Committee. Let's start with this request for the president's tax returns and whether or not you think there is a politicalization or a weaponization, as these words um, are thrown around so much lately, in that request. Absolutely. Uh, LBJ, Nixon uh, used uh, IRS for, against their political enemies. That's why in 1976 we passed a law saying that your tax returns are uh, are private, you, you, you can't show them to anybody else. So I see this as an illegitimate use of the tax returns. It's very legitimate to use them for legislative purposes. I have sometimes seen people's tax returns with a name redacted, so you don't know who it is, but in the pursuit of maybe closing a loophole or something like that, you need information to write legislation. This isn't what the House is about. This is about politicizing Trump and going after him, and that's entirely wrong. It's a misuse of congressional oversight. It's a misuse of uh, the chairman, uh, and I'm a chairman that can ask yeah. for it what to you, use it. What do you say, Senator, though, to those who say, you know, every president going back to Richard Nixon has released their tax returns? We know the president said during the 2016 election cycle that he would, and then he did not. And do you believe that someone is under audit for this many years? And if so, I mean, if the IRS has been auditing him for all these years, I guess there's also a conclusion that you could draw from that, um, that, that, that apparently they haven't found anything, or I would imagine they would have gone after him. Well, of course. Now, every president that's done it since Nixon's, it's voluntary. If the president wants to do this voluntarily, that's his decision. But remember, this was an issue in the election of 2016. It didn't keep him from being elected because he didn't release his tax returns, uh, and he hasn't done it since. He says when he, they are released, he wants it to be fully audited so that he knows what he, uh, the tax that he files, uh, they're right or wrong. And uh, and so consequently, uh, it's up, it's up to him. But uh, you can't use the power of being chairman of a committee. I don't feel I can uh, to politicize the same way Nixon did to go after his political enemies. And they obviously consider Trump a political enemy. All right. Let me ask you about a letter that you sent uh, to the attorney general, William Barr, about concerns that you had over emails that were part of the Mueller investigation. What are the concerns that you have with regard to some of the people who were investigated? And what are you, what are you digging for here? What, do, what are you hoping that you're going to learn through this process of this letter to Bill Barr? Well, here's where we are on that. And I gave a speech on this just lately on the Senate floor. Uh, it, it deals with uh, people going after the Mueller report uh, and wanting to see it fully, uh, not uh, in, in a non-redacted version, and they seem to be uh, religiously pursuing that at the very same time that a lot of us have been pursuing things that ought to be fully investigated, uh, that were similar uh, presumed violations of laws. If you want to investigate something fully and have all the documents, doesn't it apply to all sorts of political interference uh, in the operation of the Justice Department and the politicization of the CIA uh, that it ought to be used for You, you want to investigate the origins of the investigation and you want to make sure that that, that is yeah. also happening when and there's a request for full disclosure. It seems like both sides just only want what, you know, what they're interested in. But I think, you know, it, 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 both sides should um, have the transparency that, that you're seeking in order to really figure out what happened on all sides of this equation. Uh, before I let you go, sir, I just want to get your reaction to the changes that happened today at DHS. Um, and do you think it is right that, that Kirsten Nielsen, the uh, head of the Homeland Security Department, is now moving on? I'm surprised that concerning what the president said last October, November about her, about ready to fire her, and everything seemed to have gone smoothly since then, 
Uh, I'm very surprised. Uh, but the president has a right to have whoever he wants, and the acting person is very well qualified. I'm worried about what I have seen further down in the bureaucracy, like in the Immigration Service, where I know a director Cisna of that, and I know his policy uh, director there, uh, because uh, the policy director, Kathy, worked for me for 17 years. Uh, Cisna was on my staff as a detailee for three years working with Kathy. They are now the policy people down there that give an intellectual and a policy basis for exactly the uh, policies that the president wants in immigration. And it would be f uh, a real mistake if they go that far down into the bureaucracy to fire good people like that that I've worked with for 17 years. All right, Senator Grassley, thank you very much. Good to see you tonight as always, sir. Thanks thank for being you. here.